Hello everyone, welcome back. It's Build a Big with City Skylines episode 66. I'm an Eggmas and today, I don't think it's going to be a very long episode, but every time I say that, I make a liar out of myself. There's not a ton that's been going on in our city that's out of the ordinary or abnormal for the kinds of things that we do. But we kind of skipped the last episode because the same thing was true and I figured those who are enjoying the series might start to feel a little bit left out if we didn't at least take a look at some of the things I have been doing because I have been doing some things. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. Our city is growing and it's growing a lot. You can see now that we've got kind of a negative growth trend going on here, but it's, it's more along the lines of holding steady as opposed to shrinking. It's definitely not shrinking. We've got modest demand for commercial an office space <laughs> and we're starting to get a little bit of demand for residential space again we go through these cycles where we'll have really strong demand for residential so we zone a bunch of high density residential and then the demand for residential drops off and it's just ex extended um, series of office and commercial cycles that we go through where it says we want office space so we give them office space and then it goes down and then it goes back up and we give them some more and it goes down and it goes back up so that's kind of what we've been doing is just addressing that as we go you can see it's nighttime we're going to speed it up because uh, it's actually going to be easier to do this during the day but one of the things that is kind of nice to do at night is take a look at traffic because you can see by the lights uh, sort of where things are now if this is looking congested to you you're not wrong <laughs> obviously there's a little bit of congestion we've got a little bit of congestion going into this traffic circle still and a little bit of congestion coming onto the traffic circle there as well a little bit in this area mostly around this this entry into this central sort of smog is where we get the most traffic. Now, one of the things that I've done, now that the sun is coming up, we can see a little bit better, is I've taken a lot of these uh, two-way, six-lane roads and actually elevated them above the roads that would otherwise intersect with them because we had an intersection here and then we had a little straight road and another intersection and then a wee tiny straight road and another intersection and another short road another intersection it's too many intersections is basically what was going on so as congested as it might kind of look at times now it's much better now that we've got these as an overpass kind of thing and the roads underneath now we had to keep in mind specifically that we were cutting off the way for people to get on and off of these circular roads so we left this one up here for now until I can come up with maybe a longer term solution but at the end of the day it's really not bad. The traffic is doing a fairly reasonable job. We aren't getting a lot of complaints about traffic. Every once in a while we get the pop-up at a particular intersection saying, hey, there's there's some congestion here, but not too horrible. Up here you can see a little bit of congestion and uh, stretching back here. It's um, the morning rush, apparently. So, I mean, there's still a little bit of work to be done, but traffic-wise, we're doing not too badly. We added another traffic circle, the same as this one here. But we put it down here because we have the highway right here and we were getting a lot of congestion, a lot of traffic uh, and trying to make sure that we're kind of connecting where we need to connect to the traffic circle and also making sure that the outlets, the places where traffic is coming out of the circle onto another road makes sense, that we're allowing people to get where they want to go. Uh, and maybe just expediting the process of getting there. I really like this circle. I like the way it looks. It seems to work well, so we'll keep using it and uh, and carry on that way. We've used almost exclusively the stamps, the assets that we made. Just keep putting them together. We learned how to uh, align them properly so everything looks a little bit better that we've been doing lately. But over here, we kind of ran into a situation. You can see here, this is sort of the wedge shaped one that we made and then it had the long tail that stuck in here and the same thing for this guy. Obviously we had to make some adjustments to accommodate the traffic circle, but then down here it was just too small of a space to fit any of the other assets that we made. So we just did like what most people do. We put roads in and then we connected roads to roads and then we put zones and stuff. Seems to have worked out all right. Uh, again, mindful of the highway and how many intersections we have. We have one, two, three intersections. Wait, let's do that again. One, two. Actually, this isn't an intersection, I don't think. I think it just flows right onto the, the traffic search. So we've got two intersections. They're pretty close together, but they're not bad. Right next to the highway connection. So, uh, I mean, the congestion or lack thereof speaks for itself. 
we're doing all right. Uh, we placed <laughs> we placed a cargo harbor over here, as you can quite clearly see, uh, with direct access to the highway, and that's it. Uh, that guy just went right through the the pier, <laughs> just right on through, uh, and then he disappeared. Ghost ship. Uh, and we also put in another cargo train station over here because we have one over here This guy right here, and then there's there's quite a lot of commercial Business between this guy here and this area over here. So we put this one in here Hopefully maybe alleviate some of the congestion goods coming off the trains and to the, the uh, commercial areas and Then the, the main thing that I almost forgot to do was put in enough education to make everyone happy. Remember, this is a city that doesn't benefit at all from having uneducated people. We need the educated people to work in the commercial areas and the office uh, areas. So we ended up, the demand itself uh, called for another university. Let's just take a quick look at the education demand. <laughs> be an opportunity to make sure I haven't s fell behind. So elementary schools were good for demand. We've got uh, enough to last us for a little while. High schools. We fell way behind. Now we've got uh, 10,000 eligible students and capacity for 14,000. I think we actually had more eligible students. And that's why we ended up pushing the capacity up that high, is because we, we wanted a little bit of a buffer, but not this much. It, the bottom line is that we've got uh, a lot of students in high schools, and we had to put in a lot of high schools to make sure that there was space for them. And then universities, uh, you can see we're almost at capacity with two universities in our city so far. We've got uh, a university back here and a university here, and we're 7,600 out of 9,000. So we're doing all right. You can see these people over here. This is, I always, I would look at this and then based on the other kinds of service buildings, I would think, well, are they not able to get to school? And this isn't saying that these people can't get to school, that you don't have enough coverage. It's saying that these are the education levels in the city. And then if we were to sit here for long enough and watch, because now we've got enough elementary schools, high schools, and universities, over time, these would all change to the bright blue, the cyan kind of color to reflect the fact that they're uh, on the higher side of the education spectrum. So that's where it's headed, even though you look at it now and you're like, geez, do I have to place another school? No, <laughs> no, that's an expensive way to uh, find out that that's not what the, the graph is showing us or what the overlay is showing us, I guess you could say. Like, down here, we've <laughs> got... Let's switch it. Uh, can we switch it to something that's not so intrusive? There we go. So that, that was not bad. See, the elementary school, the coverage is good over here. You can see that. And then the high school, you see, this is where we start to fall behind here. And these isolated buildings all over the place just kind of start to fall behind just a little bit and then the university is the, the one where things we actually we have an orange building here which is saying nobody there has been to university yet it's not for a lack of space it's becoming pretty formulaic now to kind of get things to fit together and uh, not have too much difficulty with getting them to upgrade to their maximum levels traffic as always is a bit of a concern but when you think about it oh we dropped down below the 70,000 level because there's a demand for residential that we haven't met but we've got space let's just do that now since we're insisting on letting the simulation run we'll just all three of those should last us for quite a while uh, I'm leaving this unzoned because I kind of have a feeling at some point we might be running a road out here and then along there somehow maybe a uh, great big bridge and then back here connecting to the highway something like that but for now I just decided I'm gonna end up having to destroy these buildings anyways so we'll leave it alone We've got this space here for the residential. That'll last a while. We've got a little more space for office and or commercial. Uh, that'll last for a very short while. And then we'll probably start expanding out into this area here. It'll be quite a bit easier, I think. We'll be able to use our assets. We'll get the wedges in here. And then we'll get some more quarter circles going. And then this, of course, is our surplus buildings that we haven't used yet. I don't know if we'll ever use the cemeteries or the uh, garbage dumps but uh, I'm leaving them there for now. And if I do make a firm decision later, worst case scenario, I can bulldoze them if I have to, or they're there to be reused if we want to. 
But we basically used, if, if you look at the, uh, the dotted line that indicates the boundaries that we have to work with, we've got eight tiles out of a maximum of nine. And if you look at this space that we're using so far, we're, we're not even, we're about a quarter of the total space that is allocated to us with the eight tiles we have now we're going to add a ninth tile at some point in the near future if we were to take our population now and multiply it by four based on our density of this and all the other things we'd probably be able to support a city of 300,000 by the time it was all said and done and while you know once everything was in place maybe that's a goal <laughs> maybe we'll start to hit limits before we get to 300,000 but to be at a city of 70,000 with as few problems as we have and just this amount of space taken up, we're on pace to have a very, very large city. So I'm going to keep expanding with the basics. I want to come up with another asset, probably something that we can start using on this side of the highway and then have maybe a third kind of asset for this side or, or even a collection of assets similar to what we have here just to kind of break up. The, the shapes and the patterns and things like this. I like the way this looks. I like the way it turned out, but realistically speaking, it's only interesting if you use it for a little bit. If you use it for the entire city, we're probably going to lose out on some aesthetic points just for the repetition. So we can finish out this area up here with the same shapes reused, and I'll be very happy with that, and then try and come up with something that I can share with you guys for the other areas that we're going to be occupying as we move outwards from this central mess of quarter circles, half circles, wedges, and uh, traffic congestion. So if you want to be notified about future videos, future assets, future things, the easiest way to do that is to subscribe to my channel or follow me on social media. Links for social media are always in the information box below the video. Leave your comments and feedback. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.